for a circle with radius r, the curvature k is 1 over r. So if I have a small circle, right, this is going to be relatively large curvature, right? 1 over a small number is going to be a large number, whereas a large circle is going to have relatively small curvature. Now, why is that? Can we give ourselves an idea why that might be? Well, it's how fast it's turning. We can imagine, <clears throat> if we're going counterclockwise, at this point, my unit tangent vector is pointing that way. At this point, my unit tangent vector is pointing that way. So for a relatively small change in arc length, there's a big change in terms of how it's pointing. Whereas here, this is my unit tangent. If I move that same arc length away, it's here. The difference in terms of how it's pointing is not as great. So curvature in essence measures how fast the thing is turning. So what is our actual definition? Curvature is the magnitude of dt ds. So we can see here, this is T1, this is T2. So the change in T would be T2 minus T1. Now, what is this arc length as I move from this point to this point? That is the change in S. Same thing here, here's T1, here's T2. I tried to keep about the same change in S. So what we're looking at is, is we are looking at different kinds of situations in terms of how they're behaving in terms of how we measure that curvature. So let's take a look at uh, another example. Let's have one that has relatively small curvature, so it's not changing very quickly. So I have, here's my T1 this time. And here's T2. So I have these two vectors. I have T1 and I have T2. And this distance here is the change in S, whatever that is going to be. So let's take a look at uh, those two vectors. So I have the vector T1 here, and I have the vector T2 here. So just picking them off of that graph and then putting them tail to tail. Where is my change in T? So right here, this vector, which would be what? T1 plus T2 minus T1 is T2. So this vector corresponds to the change in T. So notice how what our curvature would be. Our curvature would be approximately the magnitude of the change in T divided by the change in S. And then we're going to take that limit, right? The actual curvature would be the limit as change in S goes to zero of the magnitude of change in T over change in S. So let's take a look at a situation where it bends a whole lot faster. So here's the same T1, but for that same essential change in arc length, so there's my change in S. Here is T2 going that direction. So again, we're gonna put these two vectors tail to tail. So here's T1 and here's T2. So here's T1. And there's T2. So my change in T, T2 minus T1 is here. So you notice that factor is a whole lot bigger. So again, the curvature is what? The curvature is approximately magnitude of T2 minus T1, much bigger this time, divided by the change in S. We've tried to keep them about the same, which of course we know recognizes as 
I guess we could put this as well, not that it matters much because that's going to be a scalar. But we're going to have the magnitude of change in T over change in S. So that's what curvature means. We're looking at how fast something is bending. So let's take a look at an example that has a relatively simple curvature to evaluate where oftentimes it can get pretty complicated. So let's take a look. So our goal is to determine the curvature of this vector valued function. R of t is two cos t, two sine t, five t, but we don't see an s here, do we? So that's gonna require us to rethink our formula. We said curvature is the magnitude of dt ds. So we need to think about how we're gonna make sense of that. Well, to answer that question, we're gonna play with the chain rule and rewrite this as what? As dt dt divided by ds dt. The magnitude of dt dt upstairs is the same thing as t magnitude of t prime of t. Well, that's something that I can work with. The magnitude of ds dt, s is a scalar. It is not a vector. So that is the absolute value of ds dt. But let's think about what that means. What is the size of the rate of change of the arc length with respect to time? That's the distance traveled. So that is the... Well, the change in distance traveled divided by time. Distance divided by time is speed. The magnitude of ds dt is going to simply be the magnitude of the velocity. It's going to be the speed. So I'm able to start with my dt ds, which we motivated geometrically, and come up with this formula, which will tell us curvature is the magnitude of t prime of t divided by the speed change in arc length with respect to time, change in distance traveled with respect to time, speed, magnitude of velocity. So we know getting T prime can be a little challenging, but uh, for this problem, it's not so bad. So we're gonna start with our velocity function. Our prime of T is negative two sine T, two cos T five. So what is our speed? I'll need the speed both for the denominator as well as to get t prime. It's the magnitude of r prime of t. Negative two sine t times negative two sine t, four sine squared t. Two cos t times two cos t, four cos squared t. Plus five times five is 25. Gives me the square root for sine squared t plus cos squared t, which of course is just one, plus 25. So we get the speed is constant, which is what makes this problem a little bit more manageable. We get root 29. And then recall what t of t is. t of t is velocity divided by speed. Which means what? Well, velocity negative 2 sine t, 2 cos t5 divided by speed divided by root 29 gives me t of t is negative 2 over root 29 sine t. 2 over root 29 cos t. And 5 over root 29. So where do we have to go next to go ahead and compute our curvature? What's my next step? Take a look at our formula. Curvature is magnitude of t prime of t divided by magnitude of r prime of t. We have the magnitude of r prime of t. We have root 29. So I need to get the magnitude of t prime. Let's take t prime of t. What will that give me? 
Negative two over root 29. Cos T. Negative two over root 29 sine T. Zero. So let's collect all of our information and finish our problem to find the curvature. So this is the information that we need. Again, our formula for curvature, our, our t prime of t, and our speed. So I need to get the magnitude of t prime of t to be able to finish this. Magnitude of t prime of t is, of course, the square root of t prime dot t prime. which is the square root of negative two over root 29 cos t times negative two over root 29 cos t, which would be four over 29 cos squared t. Negative two over root 29 sine t times negative two over root 29 sine t, four over 29 sine squared t. Plus zero. So it's our magnitude of t prime of t. It's going to be square root of 429 cos squared t plus sine squared t. Which is square root of 429 times 1. Which is 2 over root 29. So we need this piece and this piece to get curvature by using this rule. So let's put it all together. Curvature is the magnitude of t prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t, which is what? Magnitude of t prime of t, 2 over root 29, divided by root 29, which equals 2 over 29 which means that if we wanted to have a circle, the radius of the circle of curvature or the osculating circle, the radius of the osculating circle is 29 over two, because you remember curvature is one over radius, which would mean radius is one over curvature. And again, what do we mean by osculating circle? Just kind of give you an idea on this. So this is always the same, which is kind of interesting. This is a curve that has constant curvature. So an osculating circle is if I have some kind of a curve like this. If I pick a point here, it's osculating circle would be the circle in the same plane that kisses it in exactly one point. So that's something to keep in mind.